Just let him quarter brim yet. Oh, yeah, Jake, 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 in 2024, we're really in our goal of 1,000 subscribers. If you love Perth fishing, please give that button a click. Cheers. Welcome to episode 5 of Swan River Snapshots. Last time, life prevented me from wetting a line, so I examined the state of feral carp in Perth. This week, I finally got a window. Mrs. Paz has something on, so the boys and I were free to fish. It's been over a fortnight since I've hooked anything. All I wanted to do was feel a fish on the end of my line. I decided to strip it right back to basics and go back to where it all began. This week's snapshot, fish for brim in the upper reaches of the swan. No lures or fancy stuff, just me, the kids and a pile of bait. Fishing anyone can do. We're heading back to the essence of fishing where I started as a novice. I find it interesting to compare what I know now after over a decade of fishing to what I used to do as a novice. Let's see if the tricks I've picked up over the years make any difference at all. After a late lunch, the kids and I headed down to the water's edge. The location we went to is about 30 k's upstream of my usual fishing grounds, and it's been ages since I wet a line in this part of the river. I was practically shaking, and it made me wonder, are fishing withdrawals a thing? While J&M busied themselves scoping out the water's edge, I began setting up. I brought three rods, but left one leaning against a tree. Anyone who's ever fished with kids know that there's very little chance you'll be able to have a rod to yourself. True to my aim, my rigs were about as basic as anything. Six pound line with running sinkers on the main line to a small swivel, with about 40 centimetres of six pound leader to a long shank hook. No blowies to worry about, so the hooks were a bit smaller than I usually use. One rod had a slightly heavier sinker in case I needed it to hold in the current. Bait consisted of some coral prawns and cubed muleys. The plan was to send out a bait of each and see what the fish were in the mood for today. The prawns were segmented and presented on the hook about a third at a time. Out went the lines. I aimed the heavier line towards the bridge, landing it near the pylons in a slightly calmer area as the current moved through the structure. The lighter rod I gave to Jay and had him cast out towards the centre of the river with a slow retrieve. Of course, M was not to be outdone and insisted on holding the bridge rod. The first hour or so passed uneventfully. The muleys were untouched. The prawns got a few hits and even a couple of hookups. However, one fish led me straight into a snag, while the other spat Jay's hook before he could set it. Still, it told us that the fish were there and persistence would be the name of the game. It seemed the brim felt sorry for us and sent me a consolation prize in the form of the smallest brim in the bloody river. Still, it was better than nothing, and even the smallest brim fights hard. J and M were excited as well. As for me, I was just happy to catch any fish at all. It's been a lean few weeks for me, and given how happy I was for this pint-sized brim, you can guess how lean it actually was. With our confidence buoyed, we kept going. We canvassed the area with our casts, and we got a pretty good idea where the snags and the fish were holding. J and M stopped casting for a bit to have a food break, so I sent out both rods, set them down, and began to do the same. However, something had other ideas, as the heavier rod was thumped. I kept the rod tip high in order to skull drag the fish over the snags.
big. Or big. Yeah. Bigger, bigger, than, bigger than the last one. Yeah, this one's about 27. Yeah. It was bigger than the last, but I had no time to admire it, as the river gods weren't done yet. The great thing about being young is every fish is worth bragging about. Blowies, butterfish, trumpeters, and in this case, grunters, Jay doesn't discriminate. A short time later, it was M's turn. Forget skull dragging, he practically ripped the brim's head off. Again, we're not winning any size competitions, but we're having a blast all the same. It was then that we had the biggest hit of the day. A crafty fish that shot for cover and snagged the line, forcing me to snap it. I never even had a chance. After re-rigging, the kids decided to busy themselves collecting mud pies. M also took it upon himself to make a pointed statement about media. Left alone on the rods, I was soon tricked again by the river gods, who seemed to take perverse pleasure in doling out the irony. For those who haven't watched my previous videos, I made the decision to step away from flathead fishing for the time being. I've decided to step away from the flatties for a while. Well, it seems the bastards have followed me upstream. A good problem to have, in my opinion. The rat brim kept coming. However, it was getting harder and harder to hook them. Rather than leaving the base to sit, I became more active, letting the fish mouth the bait on a slow retrieve before striking. What kind of dad would I be if I didn't get the chance to have a bit of fun? With our fair share of fish caught and fun had, it was time to go. 
The kids were buzzing, and so was I. Yeah, fishy! I can't emphasize how much fishing helps me, and it was good to return to my roots, so to speak. In regards to my comparison between now and then, I could summarize the differences in the following ways. I now know how to rig for conditions, and no one size fits all for any type of fish species. I know more about bait selection and presentation, how to get maximum hook exposure, and the correct size of bait to use. My casting. I can aim heaps better than I used to. Didn't lose anything in the trees either. Canvassing an area. I know to span out my cast so I can get an idea of the lay of the land, or the water in this case. My experience can allow me to feel when a fish is mouthing the bait and set the hook at the appropriate time. And lastly, I know I need to keep changing things up. All in all, fish is a sport of continuous learning, growth and discovery. However, it's also true that anyone can head down to the local and chuck a line in. One of my favourite things about fishing is the fact I can do it with my sons. Give it a go. It's a great arvo out and the kids love it. Snapshot complete. Thanks for watching and don't forget to do the whole like and comment thing. I'll be around wetting a line when I can. This video is dedicated to J and M. This is Paz wishing you fair winds and tight lines. Until next time.